Welcome to Lead Pages session for Twin City Startup Week. My name is Bob Sparkins. I'm joined by two of my favorite people in the world, colleagues here at Lead Pages, Jeanette Durazio and Madeline Blasberg. And we're excited to have uh, a participation here inside of the Twin City Startup Week. We love being part of the Minneapolis St. Paul tech scene. And I've asked Jeanette and Madeline to come on for just a minute before we start the official training to say hello. Uh, so Jeanette is our CEO for the last year, and I'm excited to be under her leadership for where Lee Pages is headed. Uh, she comes to us from a couple of other nice tech companies in the Twin Cities area. Uh, so Jeanette, just a quick hello from you and why you're excited about Twin Cities Startup Week and uh, the future of tech in this area. Great question. Good afternoon, everyone. Thank you for joining our session. Uh, it is nice to virtually um, be with you. I know the Delta variant and COVID has kind of threw us for a little bit of loop, but um, we're all used to this digital world and that's something that Lead Pages is really great at. So here we are. Um, I, I am really excited about Twin City Startup Week. Um, just the energy uh, and the passion that we have with all the entrepreneurs uh, in the Minneapolis-St. Paul area, as well as greater Minnesota, um, is so energizing and um, exciting, uh, especially as we've um, all pivoted to a, a new digital norm, if you will. So um, I, I've participated in a couple sessions and they have been fantastic. So I hope you enjoy ours as well. Um, and I'll turn it back over to Bob. Thank you, Jeanette. Uh, yeah, you're absolutely right. It's great to uh, see all the great sessions that are here. Hopefully this isn't the only one you're catching. There's, you know, what, 40 a day at, at least. least. Uh, at the least. crew over at uh, Beta MN and the rest of the Twin City Startup Week volunteers just crushing it. And all the other presenters uh, are really bringing their A game too. So thanks uh, for letting us be part of it and for each of you as well. Uh, and I'd also like to introduce you to Madeline Glassberg, our Director of Marketing. Uh, same type of question, but from your perspective, Madeline, I know that you get to work uh, as part of the uh, marketing team here at Lead Pages, you understand what it's like to be a, a startup in 2021, you know, mm -hmm. coming through the pandemic, et cetera. So uh, any quick bits of wisdom you may have for those uh, people on this session who are just raring to go with either a new product or uh, their first product and, and growing their business? Um, I have to be quick about that. <laughs> <laughs> Sure. Um, yeah. Well, first of all, hello, everyone. We are super thrilled to be with you. Um, for those of you who haven't crossed paths with Lead Pages in the past, I think it's important that you know, you know, we are a growing team, late stage startup ourselves um, of many entrepreneurs in their own right. And we're really built for entrepreneurs by entrepreneurs. So I hope it doesn't come off as too cliche to say you are our people and we are in this fight with you. So um, the first thought that came to my mind was keep going, right? There's everything is changing. Um, I think variation is everywhere we look and change is only accelerating. So keep going and then uh, pre-sell what you've got, which is really how Lead Pages was built. Um, if you don't know our founding story, it's a really interesting one. Um, basically, it, it stemmed I'll from the thing just a minute. <laughs> Oh, okay. I'm gonna, you know, I'm just gonna cue that up for Bob to cover. Um, I would say keep going, be scrappy, um, look for great tools, build a great community around you, both in terms of your tech stack, but also the people you look to for advice. Um, and, and don't give up. And come see us at our new headquarters in the North Loop. We just moved to a great new building on Third Avenue and Washington, and we would we were really looking forward to being together with you, but. We've got a great slate of events uh, queued up for next year when it's a bit safer to gather in small and large groups. So if you're not on our email list or connected, Bob will tell you how to do so, but we really sincerely look forward to meeting all of you in person when the when the opportunity comes by. Yes, exactly. And and thanks for letting me tell the story. I didn't want to ruin it, but uh, <laughs> it's all good. But yep. uh, I also wanted, I think Madeline sort of alluded to this, we're a growing team. So the obligatory Twin City Startup Week hashtag we're hiring is absolutely true for us. Engineers, customer success, uh, new copywriter we were looking for. There's lots of openings uh, for our team as we continue to grow. And although we were founded back in 2012 and have had fundraising and have had acquisitions and then split off and become acquired by a Canadian tech company, uh, we're still in that late stage startup phase where we are absolutely growing 
and having a lot of fun doing it and seeing uh, lots of challenges and opportunities and fun along the way. So Jeanette and Madeline, thanks so much for hopping on for a minute. I uh, really appreciate your words to the crew before we get started the training. All right. Uh, so let me go ahead and share my screen and let's get into it. Uh, if you are uh, here with us live, obviously, I'd love to have you utilize that chat. Um, it is an opportunity for you to ask me questions throughout the training today and also give commentary, give insight. I know that there are many of you that have already gone through many stages of your business cycle so far, and you might even be able to teach this session yourself. I'd love for you to have your bits of wisdom captured in the chat as well. And for those of you that are brand new, I know that you're going to really enjoy the shortcut I'm providing to you today with some marketing strategies um, that are at play. Uh, so again, settle in, ask questions, and uh, make sure that you're utilizing um, that chat. Uh, and with that, let's go ahead and, and dig in. So the core message I have for you today, actually, it's twofold. One is a question. And what if you could set your sights on your fourth quarter revenue goal and actually achieve it in just a few days, just three or four days out of the fourth quarter, absolutely crushing a promotion and generating as much revenue in the fourth quarter uh, in those three days as you might have otherwise done. And the second kind of subtext of this, which is really where I think many of you are, are looking for too, is what if you sold your first or your next product before you actually created it? So in the chat, if you want to share what you're offering, what you what your stage of business is like, that's super helpful for me as I teach this session today. Um, but I'm going to take the assumption that most of you watching this training are either at the relatively new stage of your business, or you're about to launch something new. And this concept of pre-selling it during the fourth quarter of 2021 here is ideal for you. And I'm going to give you a framework for doing that. So ultimately what we're up to doing during our time together today is I want to tell you some reasons why we think that a holiday hustle is really worth the energy and the focus and attention that you can give to it. And then I'm going to give you a specific framework to put that into action for yourself so that you don't have to guess at what all the pieces are. I call it the play framework. I used to be a high school history teacher, so acronyms are second nature to me, and I'll break that down for you today. And then I also just want to give you some ideas on what your offer can be and then hear from you in the chat what offers you think you might put together and give you some advice to it if you'd like. And if you're watching this via replay, uh, hop on to one of our conversion coaching calls it's, uh, for Leadpages customers uh, if you'd like so I can give you some, some ideas about that too. And then what I'm going to give to you today, there's a link under this video for this already, and you can use that, but I'll, I'll remind you of it a little bit later on too. But I do want to give you a free gift today of a digital marketing resource, uh, which is a holiday hustle marketing kit, which is going to give you a lot of the pieces of the puzzle that uh, we just simply don't have time to go over every little detail, um, but this is free, just exchange for your email. And as Madeline said, we'll also keep you up to date on what's going on in the future, okay? Uh, so again, please do ask questions along the way and utilize that chat uh, because uh, although we are not in person together in our offices here in the North Loop, I hope that uh, you do treat this as interactive as possible uh, with your questions. Uh, so please, please, do, please do that for me. All right. So again, the goal is that uh, we want you to make more revenue in just a few days with the holiday hustle. Uh, but for this presentation's goal, by the end, I want you to make a choice. Will you do a holiday hustle or not? And either way is cool. Hopefully you'll take this idea and run with it and absolutely have a blast and generate lots of revenue from it. But if the decision is no too, that's okay. I just want to make sure that by the end of the session, you ask enough questions and you learn enough that you can make the choice. Yes, you're going forward with a holiday hustle, because although we're doing this training at Twin Cities Startup Week in the end of September or the middle of September, uh, you don't have much time left to do the preparation. Uh, and so the earlier, the better. All right. Uh, now I'm going to skip over the, the bulk of my bio, but just to give you a sense of, of who I am. I used to be a high school teacher. I used to have my own business. I've been with Lead Pages now since 2014 as an employee, but I'm actually customer number 33 out of all the tens of thousands of customers that we have. And so I've, I understand what it's like 
to be in startup mode, to be in growth mode, and to, uh, to have an idea and want to deploy that idea and execute on it quickly. So I want to encourage you to adopt a philosophy I have, which is to take action and revise later, making sure that whatever goes forward, you're paying attention to not only the actions you're taking, but the feedback you get from your audience and not try to wait till things are perfect or everything is in uh, alignment. And you have to make some choices and, and move forward without all the information and then revise along the way. That's really, really important. All right. And uh, we mentioned this about Lead Pages too. Lead Pages has been around since 2012, software company, landing pages, website builder, all that kind of cool stuff. Uh, but what I'm most excited about is this uh, collage of photos. And you can almost see the edge of it on my over my shoulder here in our office in the North Loop. Um, this is a collage of 25 of some of our awesome customers around the world who are coaches, they're consultants, they're accountants, they're real estate agents, they're food and uh, nutrition experts. They are software app developers. They are videographers. There's all kinds of industries represented here, but they all have a common theme, which is they are really good at what they do. They are experts at what they do, and they love to lead their audiences. They love to transform the lives of their clients through the work that it is that they do. And I hope that you're in that situation yourself, that you are recognizing the value that you offer to your world, whether that's global or the Twin Cities or anywhere in between. And I want to encourage you to, to take on that mantle because for the people whose lives you do touch, you are transforming them. And it's a beautiful thing. And I want you to uh, enjoy that because it's, it's really exciting. Uh, and as Madeline mentioned, we are in the North Loop. Here's, our, here's where our headquarters are. Come on by for a visit uh, when the pandemic is in, in full force. We will be hosting mastermind events and networking events and so forth inside of our building here at the Colonial Warehouse, right across from the Monte Carlo. And I do want to share this story. Madeline alluded to it a moment ago, but I do want to quickly share the Leap Pages origin story because, in fact, it is a holiday hustle story. Clay Collins, who some of you may know, uh, now at uh, running his Nomics uh, crypto uh, data aggregator site and so forth. Uh, Clay Collins was uh, back in the day, 2011, 2012, a successful coach, business marketing mind with a YouTube channel, uh, sharing videos and ideas from his loft from under a staircase. Um, if you've seen these videos before, I'd love for you just to uh, give a quick chuckle or, or some kind of note in the chat. Um, but basically, Clay uh, came up with the idea of a software tool to allow people to use landing page templates to further their marketing. And it was in November of 2012, leading into what is now known as the Black Friday super holiday uh, area, where he and his co-founder, Tracy Simmons and Simon Payne, decided to uh, put up for offer the idea of lead pages before it was built. It was an idea. Uh, they had already created something called Lead Player, and they had some online marketing courses and so forth. But the idea of the software uh, did not exist yet. Yeah, but he, I mean, the idea existed, but the software itself did not exist. And so throughout the month of October, November, he did a communication with his audience. That's, you know, you can see the, the email that I still have in my inbox of, uh, you know, here's the landing page software that we're, we're about to release and then put it up for pre-sale. I'm happy to be one of those early adopters on that first day who did decide to purchase. And there's obviously been a lot of success since then. But we didn't know, and Clay certainly didn't know that back, you know, eight, nine uh, years ago, that this, I, this product idea would turn into what it has become, which is a software platform that had raises over $38 million dollars an acquisition of another company, uh, a decision to split off the lead pages section of our company and join forces with a Canadian company called Redbrick, not to be confused with the health company. So there's a lot of journey and pivot along the way, but at, at the very beginning, our success stems from taking a chance, putting forward an idea, and during a small window of time, promoting this software uh, that didn't exist yet. And so what I want to encourage you to do is no matter where you're at in your business, I want you to be willing to come up with an idea, follow the steps that I'm going to share with you today, and then pre-sell it before it exists. And if you already have a product, you can either come up with a new feature set or something else like that, or 
you can decide to take elements of what I'm teaching you today and make the most of that. So with that, let's get into the heart of the matter, which is what is a holiday hustle and why is it worth it? Uh, so to me, a holiday hustle has three components. Number one, it is a short promotion one to three days, uh, pretty much at the most, it is tied to a holiday, right? So we're going to be talking about this in the sense of Black Friday, Cyber Monday, but obviously you can do it any time of the year. And most importantly, if you do a holiday hustle right, it will consume about 90% of your business activity for five to six weeks. If you're not, if you're not able or willing to, to focus that amount of time in your business life towards a promotion like this, uh, it's still going to be good. You still might have some good results, but it's not going to really crush it. And that's what I want you to, to envision is being able to set aside time, have the patience, have the persistence, have the plan, and put the pieces together that I'm teaching you today over that five to six, six week window so that you can have that really great result for your holiday hustle. So we're going to be talking about this in the sense of Black Friday, but yes, you can do this for Cyber Monday. You can do this for New Year's. You can do this for a religious holiday like Christmas or Eid or Diwali or Hanukkah or any other holiday that's important to you or to your audience. Uh, you can also do this for your birthday or your anniversary or your business's birthday or your business's anniversary. Uh, there's all kinds of ways to do it. You can even take a random national whatever day and turn it into a reason for an event, a reason for a promotion. Because people love to be part of an event. Just that's why you're here at Twin City Startup Week. Every one of us teaching a session today is doing so because we're together at one time during an event. There's a lot of great energy. There's a lot of great passion for what it is that people are doing and creating. And, and that idea of bringing people together is super powerful, not just for the results you get in that moment, but for the attention and for the gravity that you have pulling other people into your orbit to your sphere. All right. Now we're going to be talking about a lot of different types of offers, um, or we could talk a lot about different offers. We're going to be talking primarily around the idea of pre-selling a new product, but many of you already have a product. And so there's some other ideas you might want to consider. The main thing I want you to not lead with, although you can do this, but I want you to initially remove off the table, the idea that your holiday hustle needs to be a discount for your primary product or service. As we go into Black Friday, obviously there's a ton of people, a ton of businesses that are going to lower the prices. This is why we go on Amazon, we get the great deal on the Alexa products or uh, the TV that you want or whatever. Um, but as a, as a service provider, software developer, et cetera, uh, because we don't want you to feel like you're a commodity, I want you to initially just remove that as an option. You can always return to it because it's the easiest thing to do, uh, but it's not necessarily the best for your business. Uh, we'll talk about why in a bit. What I want you to think on first is, do you have a brand new product or a brand new feature set uh, next stage of your of your company that you can do and offer it as a pre-sell? And we'll talk about why in a little bit. Uh, but you can also offer a bundle of, of previous stuff that you have or buy one, get one if you've got multiple products. Uh, if you've got a primary product that you don't want to discount, you can offer a new bonus, a new feature set. Uh, it doesn't even have to be your product. You can tag team with other entrepreneurs. Uh, or if you have multiple products or you're an e-commerce business and you have specific product line, you might offer multiple products for sale. We'll talk more about some of these in a, in a little bit, uh, but I just want you to be thinking initially, you know, when it comes to a holiday hustle, when it comes to promoting something, what is it that you're going to create? All right. So next question is now that you get an idea roughly of what it could be, why should you do it? Well, for one thing, it's focus. So one of my other philosophies in, in business and life is uh, not working best under deadline, but only work on, under deadline. And when you work on a holiday hustle, you have a calendar event to work from. And with that calendar event, that means that your focus can be attended to because there is a very specific deadline that you have at the end. And that focus can be very powerful, especially if you have entrepreneurial ADD or any other types of uh, issues with focus. Uh, attention is also important. It gives you attention from other people. It also puts your attention on the business, but I want you to think also about how much the interaction you have with your audience with a new product like this can get people to know who you are, what it is that you do. It should ultimately be a win-win. If you do a hustle right, you love it because it's great revenue. It's a great opportunity to produce your new product or new feature set. 
But for the customers, they're going to get a great deal as an early adopter on something new and fresh that's, that is transformative to their life, helps them out in some particular way. This also then turns into having a group of super fans. Some of you watching this, you know Clay Collins, you know the history of Lead Pages. You've been with us for a very long time. Uh, you've used our product or you've been connected to us in some particular way. And, and that puts you in that camp of being a super fan. We want the same thing for you. We want you to come away with this type of promotion, not just with extra revenue and extra customers, but people who were excited to be part of this event with you. And they will remember that and be tied to you. It's a very, uh, very strong emotional connection that you can make during this process. And ultimately, obviously, uh, it's worth it because of the revenue. It also isn't too complicated. It's, it requires effort, requires energy. But the nice thing is, is that uh, any type of event like this, you can learn from the past. So I do want you to recollect in your memory banks uh, what you've enjoyed as a customer as you consider what you would put together, what you would do for your holiday hustle. And think about how much when you participated in something like this, how much did you feel like you saved versus how much value did you get? And obviously getting both is great, but as a producer of whatever it is that you're doing, I want you to, to know that value that you put into this particular promotion is going to be super important. Uh, also, what experience uh, did you have as you went through the purchasing process, as you went through the pre-sale window of time, the you know, days or weeks beforehand that you enjoy, that you loved, and even afterwards, did you participate in something and then the delivery of that product was uh, overwhelmingly positive? I want you to be thinking about those so you can incorporate the best lessons of what's available. And then also, do you remember any particular offer you enjoyed during a pre-sale like this uh, or a holiday hustle promotion? And you just, you knew it was just a really awesome offer. It was very unique and there wasn't much else out there and it allowed you to experience something that not a lot of other people did and certainly set the stage a little differently than what it was like for the people uh, who are just normally selling discounted stuff, okay? So think about the favorite brands you have. Think about the people you've bought from before. Incorporate those lessons uh, that you can model, all right? Now, of course, it's all fun and good. It sounds great, but it is not a cakewalk. So I do want to mention that, as I, as I said before, this does require a lot of your attention. If you're going to do it right, it's going to pretty much be the dominant focus for the next six weeks. Uh, if you are going to advertise, which I would recommend that you do, uh, you're going to experience uh, some challenges advertising during this time of year, especially in mid and late November. So we want to focus that attention in late September, early October. Uh, there's a lot of competition. There's a lot of interesting challenges going on right now in the market and the world, global finance, uh, your particular area of industry might have some interesting uh, issues going on. Those are always a challenge. And then also, if you don't do a, ho a holiday hustle the right way, you can annoy your existing customers. Uh, and if you ignore your existing customers, um, obviously you've got uh, a bit of a challenge with that, all right? Uh, so those are just a few of the, the ways that I want you to understand that there is stuff in the way, but I'm gonna help you out. And I'm gonna help you out by giving you a framework on executing a plan. And I call it the play framework. As I mentioned, I used to be a high school history teacher. So acronyms are my jam. And uh, this is no exception. So PLAY as a framework stands for plan, lead, activate, and then yearly, yearly or yearify. And we'll break down each one of these uh, for the remainder of the session. So the first one is plan. And as I go through each of these steps, if something seems like you need clarification or you have an idea about it, please feel free to put it into the chat. Uh, so the first one is plan. And if you ever read The Little Prince, uh, you came across the work of Antoine de Saint-Exupéry. And this is one of the famous quotes that he has, a goal without a plan is just a wish. And so I don't want you to wish that you have success <laughs> with the holiday hustle. I want you to plan for it. And that plan looks something like this. Here's a, a quick breakdown of the calendar of, you know, what does it take to put a hustle together? November 26th is the day of Black Friday this year. So again, you can do this for any holiday of the year, but we're focused on Black Friday for this session. That means that five to six weeks prior is when you really should be going full tilt. 
And so during the first week, you're planning, you're providing foundations, you're getting some initial ideas together. Uh, the second week, you're priming your list. You're starting to engage with your audience. Now that list is hopefully via email, but also on Instagram, on Facebook, in a group, on LinkedIn, on TikTok, whatever channels that you're leveraging. Uh, maybe you're doing a podcast, lots of podcast sessions this week, by the way, to, to go pay attention to it. I hope that you're doing so. Um, prime your list, get that audience involved in the conversation that you're leading. Uh, then you're going to create the offer. We're going to talk about more about offers in a little bit. You're going to then have your promotional campaign work, making the graphics, making the landing page, sales page, getting the checkout process all together. And then you're going to go live on uh, Black Friday or during that particular week. All right. Now, if you do this the right way, it can be super successful. Uh, here's an example of one of our customers that uh, did this back in 2020, uh, does this all every year, basically. They have a takeover page on their website using our welcome gate plugin for WordPress. And this Cyber Monday sale is an example from the bucket list bombshells of a, of a program that they uh, had released something new. So you have all kinds of, of different ideas that you can do. Now, as I mentioned, Cyber Monday, you have New Year's, different parts of the year, uh, different religious holidays, your birthday. Uh, the big game is uh, so, you know, for the Super Bowl. And one of my favorite promotions I ever did as a high school history teacher coming into entrepreneurship was a sale that was only available during the halftime of the Super Bowl. Uh, worked out really well, a lot of fun. So you can come up with whatever creative ideas that you want for when to do it. Um, but the most important things for you to think about as a planner of this event, number one is your personal deadlines. So start marking on your calendar when you want certain things to be done. Uh, what kind of advertising schedule are you going to have? I mentioned this a moment ago, but it's never uh, too, too much to repeat it. You don't want to advertise between November 15th and November 30th. You just want to cut off your Facebook ads and not spend money then because it's super expensive, very competitive, and the results are just not that stellar. If you are going to advertise during that window, make sure it is for your existing people. So using remarketing ads, but you do want to advertise to drum up business in September and especially in October so that you can have your, your great list available and, and audience built. Uh, you want a content release schedule. So we'll talk a little bit about content in a little bit, but you're going to be releasing uh, some type of communication, whether it's on Instagram or Facebook or on your own website. And that content needs to come out at a certain window of time to be effective. Your emails and social media uh, messaging should be on a schedule. And then, of course, you need to plan out what your offer is actually going to be. And there's a way to do that to get the most involvement with your, with your audience. Now, one big thing to note as you plan out what your offer actually is going to be is I want to encourage you to offer something awesome for everybody. One of the big mistakes people make doing a promotion around a holiday is they do jump right ahead to a discount of their primary product. What happens to all those people who've already purchased? Number one, they're sad and frustrated that they didn't get the good deal. Then they're going to communicate with you that they didn't get the good deal. And can you extend the offer to them? And a lot of times your answer is going to be no. And that's going to be frustrating. Uh, but also, if you don't have their energy with something new, then you're just losing a lot of the oomph that you can have with a hustle like this. So I want to really emphasize, try not to offer your primary product for sale during your holiday hustle. There's reasons to do it, and it can be done really well. But if you're the startup like I'm thinking about or a service professional, and you're the expert, you don't want to be seen as a commodity, I would recommend this is the last thing that you try to do. Instead, come up with a new thing that nobody else has in your audience and even your existing customers. What are they hungry for? What's a new program, a new software tool, a new feature set that you can upsell uh, or upgrade people to? Uh, these are the types of things I want you to, uh, to keep in mind. And if you're not in that world, you're in some other type of startup land, then think about some other stuff that you've done in the past. Maybe you can bundle together, redo it. Uh, maybe there are multiple products that you have and you can offer one uh, and then get one free. So buy one, get one free or buy one, get one half off. Buy one, get one free is 
10 times better than buy one, get one half off, by the way. Uh, offer the same product you normally do, but uh, extend a bonus. So some extra value that works especially well if you are some type of service professional and you typically have a client relationship where you're selling maybe a, a three month program, uh, then you offer some one-on-one -on -one time or you offer uh, some other kind of bonus. It can even be something tangible like uh, movie gift certificates or gift certificates to um, uh, Amazon or uh, get them new AirPods or you know some kind of a, of a trinket that might be more valuable than the sound of trinket or tchotchke, but can still provide some value. And then, like I mentioned before, if you are a person who is a business that is selling uh, some form of product line, uh, and I just was at an event recently where a lot of the women who were in the audience do hair care product line, you can offer multiple uh, products for sale, for example. So I want to move to the next part of the framework, but the planning is extremely important. And, and so we just don't have time to go over every little detail about it. So because 90% of the success of your uh, promotion is going to come from planning, uh, we've put together a checklist for you for free that you can download at the link that you see there, uh, leadpages.com slash TCSW hustle. So Twin Cities Startup Week hustle. And that I'll put into the chat as well. Uh, you can see it below the video, but just in case you need it there, we'll go ahead and put it there. Uh, so on that page, uh, not only are you going to get this checklist, but you'll also get a guide to uh, putting a promotion like this together. You'll get an image collection that you can use for the holidays. And there's also uh, just some additional materials there for you. So uh, check that out and make sure you read over the, the full page for it. All right. Uh, so the checklist is going to be very helpful for you because it's going to give you the step by step to do each in, in the particular weeks, weeks ahead. All right. Again, if you have questions, please do feel free to put it into the chat because uh, I do want to answer those. Uh, but next up, let's go to the second stage of the framework, which is to lead. So obviously lead has many different, uh, different meanings to it. And with lead in this particular case, I want you to start with value. So what I mean by that is no matter what you're doing, your goal overall is to make a lot of money or launch a new product or impact the lives of your people from the sale of the product. But at the beginning stages, you also want to be leading with value because you're having to attract more and more people to your world. And you do that through value. Uh, it can come from the content or the communication that you do. Uh, you can be on other people's podcasts. You can be doing lots of uh, Facebook Lives, uh, other reels, other types of activities where you're teaching or helping people understand a concept in a new way uh, long before you're actually selling to them. So be thinking about not just the end goal of selling something uh, to them, some product to them, but along the way, what is it that you can provide value for? And along the way, ask them for their email address. Use lead generation to get your audience off of social media onto your email list. Social media is awesome. I know many of you are learning from others this week about social media, and it's great to have a lot of audience followers on those channels. But at the end of the day, email remains the number one ROI marketing channel compared to all the other things. And it doesn't mean you only do email, of course. The other things are important as well. But a lot of people start to forget that email still has the best ROI of all the marketing channels. So as you're doing your, your contribution to the, your industry and communicating, providing value, give people the opportunity to say yes to giving you their email address in exchange for something. It could be a series of tips, it can be a video, it can be a checklist. There's lots of things that you can provide to folks. I wanna give you an example from one of our uh, customers, Jasmine Starr, uh, who did a holiday hustle in the spring and leading up to uh, what I believe was a Mother's Day offer, uh, she did an Easter giveaway of a set of images that people could use for social media. Jasmine Starr is a pretty well-known uh, marketing mind for social media strategy. And so to get her list ready to buy something about a month later, she gave away free images for Easter uh, for her audience. In this landing page that you see, uh, she, she got 45% of the people that saw this page to opt in. 
which is a phenomenal number. That means almost five people out of every 10 that came to her page said yes and gave her their email address. Uh, so then the next few weeks later, when they did, uh, when she did the, the sale for, um, I think it was a Mother's Day sale, um, she was able to do it uh, really, really well. And then we have another example from Ashley Ann Jones, and she uh, she's uh, King Ashley Ann on Instagram. Uh, she, she got a 78% conversion rate on this particular page. Very simple page, uh, but she was giving away templates for people to utilize that were important for what it is that you're, they're trying to do. Uh, so these are landing pages. You can also use lead generation in multiple areas of your uh, online presence. So if you have a website, obviously using landing pages is great, but you can also do blog post pop-ups. So Career Contessa is one of uh, lead pages customers. She's got this blog post uh, and in the middle of it, you can see this little uh, graphic. And when you click on it, a pops a pop-up. So you can add to your existing website these pop-ups that allow you to give away something for free, but in exchange for the email address. Uh, you can also use alert bars, which are those things at the top or bottom to get people's attention. The point is, is lead with value, but also ask people for their email address so they can join your email list. You can communicate to them over the course of the holiday hustle promotional window. And then also beforehand, getting them ready and excited for what it is that you're doing. What are some lead gen ideas? Well, we've talked about one of them already, that checklist idea is something that you can do. So think about your product that you want to sell during a holiday hustle. What is it solving? And are there some things that you can conceptualize for people into a checklist that they need to do that will help you get people's interest in the area in which you're trying to serve them? Don't come up with a checklist that is completely unrelated to your product. If you have something that can provide a template for people, and that template can be in the form of document templates, email templates, uh, it can come in the form of Excel templates, it can come in the form of workout templates if you're a fitness professional. Um, there's lots of different things that you can think about where you're templatizing a process for people so they can shortcut from where they are to where they want to go. And then along the way, they're going to be on the journey towards buying your product. Uh, you also have videos. I would keep these to two to five minutes at the most. It's just something short and sweet, but solves one issue with one solution. That kind of short video training works really great on LinkedIn, works really great on other social media channels, but especially if you start it in the social channel and have them finish it in exchange for their email address. Uh, you can also do webinars or social live events. Um, these are fantastic to do, but typically not that great at generating leads in the first place, but they are great at getting people's attention once they're already on your list and getting them further down your marketing funnel, uh, what we call mid funnel or bottom of funnel uh, people. Now, whatever lead generation idea that you do to get them on your email list, it should be a stepping stone towards what it is they're going to buy from you during your holiday hustle. So, don't just come up with some lead gen idea because you think it would make sense for people to give you their email address if they want it. Make sure it's tied together and connected to what it is that you're ultimately going to sell. Uh, if you don't, there's not going to be any reason for them to keep talking to you or reading your emails or watching your social uh, positioning uh, channel uh, work and so forth. So make sure that they are connected. All right. Uh, so that is the lead element of the play framework. Uh, the third stage of your play framework is the activate phase. And this is where uh, you start to really get the energy and excitement with the interaction that you can get with your audience. So number one thing is make sure that along the way between now and even mid-November, you're not waiting to launch the promotion to say anything to your audience. You're actually activating them along the way. You're engaging with them every step of the way. That means Every couple of days at a minimum, but preferably every day, you are communicating to your audience in some way. It doesn't mean emailing them every day, but you can be on social with a story, with a reel, with just a post, with a meme, something that is loosely connected to the larger conversation you're having as part of your holiday hustle. So engage with them early and often. Don't wait until mid-November to start this process. It should actually begin even now, but especially in mid-October. Uh, the second way you can activate your audience is to get testimonials. Now, I know some of you might be launching something for the very first time. You don't really have testimonials, but if you do have testimonials, use them. If you don't, but you have relationships with people 
and they can speak to you as an speak about you as an expert. They can uh, ensure to the people watching or, or reading that you're somebody that is uh, worth trusting, worth paying attention to. Those types of testimonials and shout outs can be very valuable for you. Why this is so important is because, you know, that word of mouth is still the best way to get somebody to buy something, right? They're looking online, they're looking for social proof, they're looking for recommendations. And so you assist people in knowing that they can trust buying from you during your holiday promotion by getting those testimonials ahead of time. Now, not only can you use those testimonials on your sales page, but you can also use them as social posts. You can use them as credibility boosters within emails along the way. You can share them as little mini case studies and talk about lessons that were learned by that particular client or, or colleague of yours. So make sure that you're picking up some social proof along the way. Uh, the other activation thing that you want to be thinking about is actually having a conversation with your audience. So what I mean by that is partnering with your audience in a dialogue back and forth where you're posing questions and you're actually listening to the responses. And this can come in a number of different ways, um, but as a pre-sell, as I mentioned, Clay Collins was the one who did the pre-sell for lead pages back in the day. Uh, I learned from him, there's a couple of really fun ones that you can do. And then just let your imagination run for how you can get people involved in the creation of the offer that you're putting forward to them before they even know that it's for sale. So number one is you can ask your audience on social via email, what are some features or benefits that they would want to see in a product that you might want to create? What are maybe some product features or benefits that people think are terrible? <laughs> uh, one of my good friends, Nancy Marmalejo, recently put out a post on social media to her group, which was basically, what are the worst components of the coaching industry right now? You know, what are some of the things that are pet peeves of yours? And what she's doing there may or may not lead to a holiday hustle, but what she's doing there, she's getting people talking about things that they're excited to talk about. In this case, their rants, their complaints, which can also be very good as long as you don't ride the complaint horse all the way to the barn, because then you just have a bunch of negative negativity. But every now and then it's okay to say, Hey, like what's the worst thing about this? Uh, or what feature do you see uh, in your inbox that you just could do without? And then on the flip side, what are you missing? What would you love to see in a new program? Uh, those are types of things that you can do. Uh, another thing that I've seen work really well, and again, we did this for lead pages when it was started, help me pick the logo, help me pick the product design of this thing. Uh, one of the people in the audience today, uh, Anila uh, from Habit Aware, I, I've loved working with you and Adrian uh, Pierce back in the day here at the lead pages headquarters over in McKesson. Uh, where you were, you know, feeling out this app for Habit Aware, and you were trying to put some things together, and you were asking your audience some cool stuff to get them excited about what it was that you're putting together. Think about what it is that you're doing. Think about what it is that uh, you want to put out there, and then let people help you to design the way that it looks. Now, this can take the form of like, hey, I'm looking for a designer <laughs> who can make a logo. But what's better is if you work with your designer or a freelancer and you pick you know three or four different designs and then you put it out there on social media and say, hey, I've got a new program launching at the end of November and I want your help in picking the logo. This is doing two things. Number one, it's getting their involvement. It's getting their buy-in to be part of your community at this more intimate level, but it's also letting them know, hey, I've got something new coming out and it's a fresh way to do that without just saying, hey, I got something new coming out. You're going to want to buy it. <laughs> Instead, it's I've got something new that's coming out. I want your help in putting some of the final pieces together. Uh, the third is uh, similar. You know, what should I name this product or program? I've got three or four names. Which one should I pick? Uh, maybe you get some other people, some people that give you some other ideas. Again, it's just involving your audience in the co-creation process. That's essentially what you're doing is you're, you're giving people a bit of power in the development of the thing that you're doing. This co-creation has a lot of emotional tie-in and, uh, and, and connection psychologically to your brand.
Now, as you're activating your audience, we also want them to buy the thing that you're producing. So again, just to emphasize this one more time, offer something everybody on your uh, in your list and your audience can enjoy. So again, try not to do a discount, but think about previous things that you've put together that you can bundle as a, as a combo. Uh, think about a brand new program or product that you're offering, a new feature set, a version two of whatever it is that you currently have. These are the types of things that people really want. BOGO, we've talked about same product uh, with new features or an extra bonus, and then pick your products on sale. Now, it's also important as you activate your audience that you use templates to shortcut your process. So whether you use lead pages or not, I want you to understand the concept of using templates to, to take the marketing tech out of the equation. Like you don't want to have to hire a web developer to put stuff together. You don't, especially during the early stages, you might be pre-revenue. You're going to sell this stuff in November, but you might not have a lot of revenue now to pay, you know, thousand, three thousand dollars to web developer for doing all this stuff. Use templates and a software tool like lead pages to put together some really nice marketing collateral for yourself. Uh, I also want you just to go to leadpages.com slash templates and take a look at the holiday hustle templates that we've created. So at leadpages.com slash templates, again, whether you use lead pages or not, I, I obviously encourage you to do so, but I want you to look at this page and scroll down. And on the left side, you're going to see collections and then holiday. So this is going to pull up all of the different holiday um, promotional templates that we have. And you can obviously use any template for any reason, really, and use it for a landing page, for list building, or for sales pages, whatever. But I, what I want you to do is just do some homework as to you know what are some key components of each of these templates that you might want to take on. Uh, most of these are uh, able to be used as landing pages for opt-in or for sales. Uh, but just take a look, preview them, and then see what are some of those key elements. Uh, what's the headline look like? Is there a timer? Is there a, a call to action button? Where is that button compared to the rest of the page? Uh, what are some other elements on a page like this that seem to stand out to you that you can incorporate along the way? Uh, how are they using, uh, how are these templates building in social proof, uh, extra opportunities to say yes to an offer, et cetera. So uh, what I want you to do is just use these templates as a guide of, of maybe what to offer, uh, how to structure your pages, and things of that nature, okay? Now, as I mentioned just a moment ago, um, there is an opportunity for you to activate people with a countdown timer. And so this brings up the idea of urgency. Urgency is one of those psychological triggers that helps people to make a decision, yes or no, to buy your product. So as you put together your page for actually selling your holiday hustle, you wanna give people a reason to say yes or no right now. Um, this is another lesson I learned from uh, Clay Collins. And that is that if you shift your mindset from the type of person in business whose job it is to get people to buy your product, and instead you think of yourself as a marketer whose job it is to get people to make a decision, you will be very well off in your business. What does that mean? It means I don't want you to go around over the next two months trying to convince people to buy your product. Obviously that seems weird, right? Because we want to have more sales, but you, it's really, really difficult to control people's behaviors when it comes to saying yes to buying. But what you can help people to decide to do is make a decision. And so if instead of saying your job is to get people to buy, it's to get people to make a choice, you're going to have a lot more people that buy from you than those people that just don't make the choice. So urgency is one way to do that. And so having a countdown timer on your sales page to the end of Black Friday, to the end of Saturday afternoon or Cyber Monday, whenever it happens to be, but giving people a day or maybe two days at the most to make a choice gets them to actually choose. Uh, because one of the ways that your idea will flop is if you give people the idea that they don't have to make a choice right now, that they can wait until later. They can wait till some other future time. But if instead you say, look, you have to decide by midnight or this offer goes away. And then at midnight, the offer does actually go away. Uh, you give people the, uh, the opportunity to say yes or no in that window of time, which I would highly encourage you to do. Um, so having urgency is uh, very important and having that urgency actually 
move towards a zero state gets people to know they can't save this for another time. Now on my screen, you see a timer coming down from the from two days, but I would encourage you to always have your timer be less than 48 hours and the shorter the better. In Black Friday, it's especially good just to have it be that day. Uh, and what you wanna do is make it so it's that short because anything bigger than two days and even bigger than a few hours gives people this idea that they can come back later. And that's what we're trying to avoid. Another thing that I see people make the mistake on that I want you to not do, uh, and this also is part of the activate, is they use the timer and they either just let the timer go to zero and nothing happens and then people don't believe you when you have a timer the next time. But what I see more people do is they do set the timer, but when the timer hits zero, that's it. There is no... Uh, there's no recourse. It's just the offer ended, sorry, see you later. So instead I want you to pre-plan a second chance offer that's not as awesome as the first, but still gives people the reason to say yes in the first place. And if they don't say yes in time, when they come back, they still see a chance to buy at something better than what the normal thing will be later. So what that what they may look like is uh, you've got your new program, it's gonna launch, it's going to be retail for $200. Uh, during Black Friday, you've offered it for $100 for the pre-sell. And now it's $150 during Second Chance. So it's not the same as what the normal price will be. Still a savings, still a new program, still getting in early. But they have they, you give them the respect of, of saying, look, I had a timer. It went to zero. You missed out. But you do have a second chance at uh, saving some money or getting a deal of some form or another. Okay, so that's the activate stage for the play framework. And the last stage of the play framework is to yearify it or make it yearly. And what that means is once you've done this once and once you've had a successful Black Friday or whenever the promotion is going to run, why not do it some other time of the year? So next year, do it again. Have another Black Friday special, some other offer. It's a fun time to do it. People are eager to buy really great offers it's, it's got great results to it, but you also can think about doing this at other times of the year. So we've already mentioned a few of these uh, ideas, but Cyber Monday uh, is another option, but let's go different time of the year. New Year's, uh, religious holidays throughout the year, your birthday, your business's anniversary, some national whatever day, uh, whatever might be important for you. Don't just do this once. Don't do it every week either, but think about some other times of the year where you can put a promotion like this together. For myself, before I joined Lead Pages, I successfully ran a campaign during the Super Bowl of uh, the 40, of Super Bowl 42 between the Patriots and the Giants, the one with David Tyree catching the football on his helmet. Um, I sold $4,000 worth of product in 32 minutes as a, uh, as a recently uh, retired high school history teacher. Phenomenal. Uh, to get a month's worth of salary in 32 minutes. It was awesome. I've done one for the solstice. Uh, I've done one for getting ready to move. Uh, lots of other opportunities. You think of different opportunities throughout the year. They don't have to just be calendar events. They can be something that's important to you or your family. Um, here's an example from one of our customers, Brooke Gansimer. Um, Brooke Van Sickle is her um, writing name. And uh, she does Journey to Kidlet. She's a book publisher, children's book author. And uh, right now, as we speak, she, it's her birthday week. And so every day uh, she's putting together some kind of an offer for people in her audience to take advantage of and enjoy the process. And it's a super goofy image with a super goofy Photoshopped uh, party hat. Don't take yourself too seriously in some of these things. They can be a ton of fun. And again, they're, they're getting the audience more involved in some aspect of your business. Uh, and I want to encourage you to do that. Uh, and then the, the last piece about yearifying this is to evergreen the offer. So I want you to have a, a successful Black Friday promotion. I want you to do it on occasion throughout the year. But once you get a really good central offer down, then I encourage you to do what we call an evergreen offer. So this means that every new person that comes into your world as soon as they join your email list, either right away on the thank you page or three days later or three weeks later, like clockwork, that new subscriber sees your promotion for the very first time for them. So that means you're not running this promotion on social media as an ad. 
You're not putting it out there to the world at large to see, but to that individual person coming through the first stages of your marketing campaigns, they're seeing this offer like clockwork. So here's an example. This was actually originally a Black Friday, Cyber Monday special offer. Um, it's a budgeting uh, cash flow set of spreadsheets and, and a little course and so forth that's being done. And on this page, what you're seeing is the evergreen version of it. <laughs> so when people opt into our customers uh, list to get something for free, they're presented with this opportunity to buy this fuller kit at a reduced price or at a, at a fresh set of bonuses. I don't remember the exact offer, how it's different other than price. Um, but this is a really great idea and she's doing very well for her business every day. Whoever joins her list is seeing this offer for the first time. This kind of evergreen offer of what was your holiday hustle turned into something that's a promotion to every new person helps to stabilize your revenue. And I know I kicked off this presentation with the idea of giving yourself basically a quarter's worth of revenue in three days. And that's an awesome spike in revenue, but it's also a spike. And I want you to have consistent revenue too. So as you go through this entire process, you're learning, you're teaching your audience, you're seeing what works and what doesn't. And as you nail it, you want to then take that particular offer and turn it into an evergreen one. That way you can get revenue every single day or every single week of the year uh, and that becomes a more stable, predictable revenue source for you. So that's your framework. That's your play framework. Plan it, lead, activate, and then turn it into a yearly thing. And so I leave you today with the opportunity for questions, of course, um, but also with a set of action steps. So number one, as I said at the very beginning, I, my main goal is for you to choose, for you to make a decision. Will you take on a holiday hustle? And it can be no, but I hope it's yes. I hope that you play full out with what it is that you can do for your audience. And then take each stage of the framework, plan your campaign using that holiday hustle checklist I gave you. Lead with value and with content. Activate your audience early and often with your communication and connection to your people. And then build off your success with this holiday promotion and turn it into a more of a yearly thing.